Okay, so picture this. You're searching for a computer case that isn't just a generic black box. Some people may like that, but you prefer a case that looks great and doesn't necessarily emphasize the RGB or other flashy lights. Enter. Created by Makio, the Mark I is a fully 3D printed case and is exactly what I'm looking for in a case. Well, almost exactly what I'm looking for. Let me explain. There are three things I need to change with the MK01 to make it the perfect case. One, the front IO leaves something to be desired. As someone who plays VR with my Oculus Quest, a front type C port is super, super welcome. Unfortunately, the design only comes stock with two USB type A ports. Number two, any formal 2.5 inch SSD mounting. I've collected three 2.5 inch SSDs over the years. and I don't plan on getting rid of them anytime soon. While there is support for a 3.5 inch hard drive, and I technically could just print an adapter that already exists on printables, I wanted to try and make my own solution. Three, the power button shroud. Taking off the power button shroud seemed cumbersome. Not that it's impossible to do. I'm sure it's really there to protect from accidental presses. Luckily, I don't have any animals that would do that and I don't normally have a problem with accidental presses. So I wanted to make my own solution for that as well. Since everything is 3D printed in the case, it's fairly simple to tackle these problems head on. But first, we're gonna print and build the thing. Let's begin bottom up. Using a bunch of three by five bolts and their respective nuts, going front to back based on these lovely build plans that were linked on the printables page. The first snag I ran into actually relates to our first problem that we have to tackle. How do I mount the hard drive spacers? The plan doc shows where they go, but I want to be sure if it's this bolt or this bolt. Luckily, Makio had a build log. Ah, okay, I see now. So I take this screw out and then I put the first spacer in and then, wait, where does spacer two go? There's clearly supposed to be a hole here based on this video. Eventually, what I found out is the version of the case that we printed was downloaded back in August. And since August, he made a lot of revisions to the parts. And as you can see, the updated part has official support for hard drives. Well, I guess we have to just go and reprint the part, right? Anyways, with that taken care of, the spaces were mounted properly and we can finally show off fix number one. Or I guess this is fix 1.2, 1.1? Anyways. This is the SSD caddy of shame. I say shame because man, did I ever just slap this thing together. I'm not a professional 3D modeler. In fact, the alterations that I made were done in Tinkercad, hence the jankiness of my part. It worked well enough for me, so I went forward with the plan. In some future shots, you can just see how stressed, we'll say, the SSD caddy became. But hey, if it's stupid and it works, is it actually stupid? Luckily, I saw another comment on the printables page that Makio is actually working on an updated design that supports 2.5 inch SSDs. Uh, so needless to say, this caddy will not be posted anywhere. Uh, this fix is way too jank. Wait for the official release. While you watch me struggle installing these SSDs, you are probably asking yourself, Mark, is it really that hard to just go and buy a case? Yes, I mean, no, but essentially yes. Every case nowadays looks like a generic black or white box. There's too much glass everywhere focusing on the RGB that you rarely ever look at. While I understand the gamer aesthetic, I personally don't like it. To be fair, while working with computer cases, I've gotten very numb to it. Uh, I see RGB lights very often in both of my professions. However, I prefer a case that does the talking, not the lighting. And Makio says that's essentially the reason why he made the case. All right, now that all the drives are mounted, let's install the power supply. There was a little bit of a snafu installing the power supply. I did not realize that the part labeled BP underscore four that holds the PSU didn't actually support SFX PSUs. So I found and printed an adapter on printables and I printed the wrong one. So please ignore the janky power supply install. I promise I fixed it after recording. I never actually fixed it. I just realized that <laughs> it's still in there. God damn it. I'm going to 
clip out and clip back into you just telling me that you never actually existed. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's going to be the plan because it's actually just sitting there. I, I just thought about that. Never actually fixed it. Please don't tell me. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Now you may be asking yourself another question. Why are you going with an SFX power supply when the slot clearly supports only ATX power supplies? That's because of the design. If you want to put in a full-size ATX motherboard, you can only fit a SFX power supply. While I think that this is an all right trade-off, I would like to see support for both. I'm not sure exactly how that would work. Maybe shifting the power supply hole down on BP underscore four. Like I said, I'm using Tinkercad to butcher most of these parts. So I'm not a professional. Another thing that I learned going the ATX board route is that this piece right here, FI underscore L1, doesn't fit anymore. Luckily, it doesn't seem to affect anything structurally, and it doesn't really bother me in any way. It's just not covered in the build plans, neither is any of the other ATX build stuff. So I figured I'd bring it up here. Since we're already talking about computer hardware, I might as well tell you at least what is going in the machine. Basically, I'm just transplanting what was in my old machine to my new machine. The hardware I'm putting in, it's a its a few years old, but I mean, it still handles all the games that I want to run without any issues. Now onward and upward, literally. Basically follow the same procedure as everything else. M3 by five screws and nuts, and everything connects together like a jigsaw puzzle. The build plans are actually very well labeled, and I like the color coding adding some clarity for what I'm working on. Now the clarity doesn't account for human error, that's all on me. And actually, speaking of human error, before we get a little too far, now would be a good time to actually glue some nuts in place. As you can see, we did not glue the nuts in place. And Yanni and I had a hell of a time getting them in place once the motherboard is installed. So at the very least, glue the ones that go into FI underscore H5, H11, H10, and FLB5. Also, if you want to see a full in-depth build guide, let me know. I'm hoping that this video will bridge any gaps in building the case, but if it doesn't and a step-by-step -step is needed, let me know. I can do that too. Anywho, let's talk about the front I.O. situation. Now, initially, I was going to go with the stock options for the I.O. because I really wanted to try and get the build done in just one night. Little did we know it would take three nights, and this is because of some unforeseen consequences we'll talk about in a second. Physically not long enough. What I didn't know is somebody actually uploaded a model with the blessings of Makio and merges both front panel pieces together and adds a type C port. While putting it together, I noticed there were two spots that looked like a small zip tie could go through. Sadly, I only had large ones on hand. So I took the model into Tinkercad and now with the holes widened, I made sure the zip tie was down as tight as possible and routed the cables in the case. After those cables were ran, we put in the front fans. We kind of ran those fan cables down the side, put it in a little bundle. Then after that, we put in the motherboard tray with the motherboard on it. With the motherboard properly mounted, I went ahead and started plugging in the power supply cables and... Because it looks like perfect. Oh, shit. not fucking long enough. Oh, it doesn't reach. No. Because if it reaches, it's going to get in the way of the GPU. Do you talk about the GPU? No, it's, it's physically not long enough. The SFX cables were just too short for the run. I really wanted to get this done in one night since we both work full-time jobs and I have a second job, but no good things come easy. So I go ahead and order cable extensions and wait for them to show up. While we wait for the cable extensions to show up, let's talk about how you should print these parts. Well, we went with the standard print profiles in Bamboo Studio, and that honestly worked like a charm. We both agree that the light bleed and how it sort of kind of bounces off the parts infill really gives it a cool dimension that neither of us were really thinking about. We printed our parts with two walls at 10% rectilinear infill. If you want to have less chance of light bleeding through the parts, you may want to look into three or four walls in a higher infill percentage with something like adaptive cubic. The outer panels can be anything really, but the frame has to be ABS or higher for its heat resistance. We had joked about doing the whole thing in PA6 CF20. I just didn't feel like working with that material for that long again. And if you're curious how to print nylon on the A1, check out this video. In it, I go over all the settings that I used and all the extra accessories that I needed to print uh, nylon on the A1 series. And I get flamed in the comments for not including that I was using carbon fiber nylon. 
It was an honest mistake, I swear. Anyways, the cable extensions finally showed up. So with new cable extensions, a new week, and not as fried brains, we go into the final stretch of this build. After all cables are plugged into the motherboard, it's time to tackle the GPU install. Boy, that went much better and worse than I thought. It was better because I was really worried about whether or not my EVGA uh, RTX 3080 was going to fit in the case. I was worried it was going to be too wide and possibly too deep, but it fit like a glove. It went worse because of the back panel that we had to attach it to. Two problems arose with the back panel. One, the whole nut thing I talked about earlier. Glue your nuts, please. And two, how the GPU lines up with the PCIe bracket on the back panel itself. The issue that we kept having was the card would never line up with the holes, so we had to screw it in a weird way. It stayed, but it was not in comfortably. After talking to Makio about this, he did let me know that he actually updated the files and he added dust covers. So now we get to go through the replacement process so we can install the correct back panel. Now that the GPU is mounted not so precariously anymore, we proceed to our first boot, which we caught live on stream. Nice, we're in Windows. Now it's time for some cleanup. Now this is an amazing case. I'm so happy with how it turned out and I can't wait to you. Wait, what about the power button shroud you say? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. So the power button has this shroud protecting it from accidental touches like I said before, but I didn't like the idea of this personally. So remember how I said I only know Tinkercad? Well, I took the model into Tinkercad and I made these transparent ish pet g power buttons i went with a transparent filament obviously to get the power button light to shine through to complete this build see this is the beauty with going with a 3d printed case if you ever need to make your own tweaks to fit your needs you can you don't need to wait for a v2 from a company who may or may not be even listening to your problems all you need to do is just open up any modeling software and you can make the edits that you need at your own leisure so if you like this video, please leave a like. Comment down below what your favorite part of the case is and leave some kind words for Makio as I know he put a lot of effort into this. And speaking of Makio, um, I am incredibly excited to see your next projects coming up. Thank you for making such a wonderful case. Thank you for sharing it with the world and making it very easily accessible. I, like I said, I can't wait to see what you do in the future. And if you haven't already gone to the description, not only will I have all the parts you need linked down there, I will also have a link to the printables page so you can support Makio directly. While you're checking out the case on printables, also check out the other designs that he has. Personally, I've been eyeing the lamp to make next. And as always, thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It certainly means a lot to me. I hope you all have a good rest of your evening.